In this tutorial, we will teach you how to use markers in Adobe Premiere Pro. First of all, let's double click on the video file here in the Project Manager window to activate the preview monitor. Now here's a clip that has three different shots within a single clip, and let's say you want to identify the exact frame where the shot changes. This is where markers come in handy. They act as visual reference points, which can help you organize a long source clip. So let's hit the L key to move forward in the timeline. Remember, if you press the L key multiple times, the clip will speed up. And over here, notice that the shot changed. Now let's move back a little and land on the exact frame when the shot changed. Okay, so now we want to add a reference point over here. For that, click on this button over here to add a marker on this exact frame. Once you do that, notice that the green marker appears on the top of the slider. If we double click on it, a new window will open up where we can configure the marker settings. For example, let's name the marker Change of Shot. After that, let's add a small description about this marker. Over here, let's write, at this frame, the shot changes. Whatever you add in the description will show up in the tooltip window once you hover over the marker. We'll show that later in the video. Moving forward, you can configure the parameters of the marker. For example, if you want to integrate with other Adobe products, you can use the options below. By default, the comment marker option is already selected. You can choose the Encore Chapter Marker when outputting to a DVD, or enable the Web Link option, which would support certain formats like QuickTime. When playing the clip, at this particular time, it will launch the URL that you have included in the field over here. Furthermore, you can even choose the Flash Cue Point option, which will mark it as a cue point when the composition is exported to Flash. We can also determine the type of cue point, either an event cue point or a navigation cue point. An event cue point is one which you don't want to show on the navigation controls while the navigation cue point is accessible in the video player. For now, we will simply choose the comment marker option and click on the OK button. OK, now let's move further in the video and add another marker when the shot changes once again. For this marker, let's add the name and description over here as well. We will name this marker Change of Shot 2 and add the description as well. OK, now that we have added both the markers, we can use these navigation buttons to move from one marker to another. So if you click on the Go to Previous Marker button, you will notice that the Timeline Seek Bar is automatically moved to the frame where the first marker was added. The same would be done if you click on the Go to Next Marker button. OK, now let's move back to the first marker and click on this button over here. This is the Mark Out button, and what this will do is mark the ending point of the clip. Now if we move the Seek Bar a bit and click on the Mark In button, you can see that the area between the Mark In and Mark Out points is green. Now if we click on the Insert button over here, notice that only the portion between the Mark In and Mark Out points is brought to the timeline. So instead of bringing the whole source clip to the timeline and clipping each segment manually, this is a much faster way of bringing content from the source clip to the timeline. Now let's move to the source monitor and create another mark in and out points the same way as we did before. This time we will pass through the second marker so that it's also included in the clip. With that done, let's move to the timeline and position the seek bar in the middle of the clip like so. With that done, let's click on the insert button over here, and you will notice that the selected clip cuts the video in the timeline at the exact frame where the seek bar was positioned, and the clip is placed in between the cut. Now if we render the sequence, you will notice that the clip is only placed between the two clips and doesn't overlap any of the original footage. Now let's press Ctrl Z to undo the changes made. And what if we had clicked on this button over here? What would happen then? Well if you import footage using this button, the selected clip will overlap the remaining footage in the timeline. So the first option is good if you want to add a clip between the footage, and the other is used to replace the remaining part of the footage that you don't need in the timeline. Markers can also be added in the timeline, and they act a bit differently than the ones in the source monitor. Let's see what we mean by that. Over here, let's drag the seek bar to the position where we want to add a marker in the timeline. Now let's press the M key to add a marker at this particular time slot. With that done, you will notice the green marker appearing over here. Now let's double click on the marker icon and a new window will open up where you can add details related to the marker. 
Up till now, it's acting exactly as the marker we added in the source monitor. But here's where the difference lies. If we move this clip on the timeline, you will notice that the marker that we had added in the clip through the source monitor is also moving according to the clip. On the other hand, the marker that we added in the timeline stays exactly where it was added. That's because the markers added in the source monitor reference the clip where they were added, while the markers added in the sequence reference the timeline they were added in. And that's the fundamental difference between the two. If we hover over each marker, you can see the name and description appearing in the tooltip over here. So it's always a good idea to stay organized by using these small tools in Adobe Premiere. To delete a marker, all you have to do is double click on the marker icon, and once the new window opens up, click on the delete button. With that done, the marker will be removed. Moving back to the source panel, the loop option allows you to play the selection in a loop. This allows you to closely monitor the selected footage and make your creative choices, composing the timeline accordingly. And these are some of the ways you can use markers in Premiere. Thanks for watching. This was a HowTech.tv tutorial.